Hi, I'm Moshe Zeldman. Welcome to Schmoozing. We live in times of unprecedented change and confusion. The rise of cancel culture, the promises and the threats of artificial intelligence, identity politics, a society where more people are more digitally connected but are feeling lonelier than ever, and a world that seems to be edging towards World War III. I believe that Judaism can shed light on all of these issues. Schmoozing is more than a podcast. It's a platform for a community of thoughtful voices on these important topics. Let's explore together how Judaism can provoke us to deepen our understanding of the times we live in, confront the challenges we face, and bring some light into this world. Hi, this is Moshe Zelvin, and I'm excited to launch this podcast. I've traveled the world teaching Torah ideas to all kinds of audiences, uh, beginners to Judaism, academics, skeptics, Torah scholars, scientists, other rabbis. And I think we're living at a time of unprecedented change. The rise of uh, cancel culture, identity politics, the promises and the threats of artificial intelligence, uh, a society where more people have more access to digital social connections but are feeling lonelier than ever, and a world that seems to be edging towards World War III. Uh, I grew up not religious or observant, and I was thinking, you know, the Bible is this old, relevant book of stories and ancient laws, does nothing to do with me, has no bearing on my life. Uh, in my 20s, I re-examined it as an adult, and I found two things that shocked me. The first is that I discovered that there's actual evidence that the Torah is a divine book. It does not take any leap of faith, it does not require any irrational thinking, to come to a conclusion that this book was clearly written by God. It's not going to be a topic for right now. There's plenty of stuff online. I'm happy to be in touch with you if you're interested in more resources. But I was shocked to discover that there's clear, logical, scientific, compelling, rational evidence that this book really came from the creator of the universe. The second thing I discovered is from the very word Torah itself. The word Torah, like the word mora in Hebrew, means a teacher or an instructor. And Torah really is an instruction manual. It's instructions for living, instructions on how to get the most out of life. And the idea is that if you really want to understand key insights into understanding life and the issues of life, all you have to do is look in the Torah, the Bible, the Talmud, the Kabbalah, the writings over the generations, expounding on it, is there to teach you everything you need to know about life, morally, spiritually, socially, your mission and purpose in life, how to understand people and get along with people. It's all there. And that's what really changed my life around. I came to realize that if you want to understand the nature and the purpose of life, you just delve deeply into the story of the Garden of Eden. You want to understand relationships. Look at the relationship of Adam and Eve that tells you all about marriage, relationship, intimacy, male and female. Uh, You read the story of Abraham going to sacrifice Isaac. It's really a deep lesson about ethical monotheism, relative morality. So, when you scratch the surface, you see the Torah is full of these things. Ten Commandments, they, they, are, they are guiding fundamental principles, they're prescriptions for your own personal well-being, for creating a harmonious society, and for making a world that's, that's good for everybody. So I began to take the journey towards becoming an observant Orthodox Jew. I got married, I moved to Israel, I studied full-time in a yeshiva, Uh, college for Jewish studies for many years, I became a rabbi. So I invite you to join me in looking at the headlines, the social issues, the the personal challenges that we all face. And instead of just seeing the the political, the psychological, the emotional dimensions to all these issues, to try together to look at them through the lens of Torah, to see that there's a deeper spiritual and moral dimension of all these issues— and how we're supposed to relate to them. Uh, I don't believe in simplistic answers. I think that God created a a complicated world. You ask any physicist to describe the mathematics and the forces involved in lighting a match, the minute amount of red phosphorus that converts it to white phosphorus, which then ignites, which sets off a decomposition of the potassium chlorate to give oxygen, and then the sulfur catches fire and ignites the wood. I know, I looked it up on Google. It's pretty cool. So too... So too, if you ask any psychologist what's involved in helping a person who has some sort of a mental block, there's a whole DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistics Manual, that lists 297 disorders. They could take months or years to unravel. 
human psychology, just like the laws of physics, is very complicated. It's very nuanced. There's no one answer that applies to everybody and everything. Just like it's true in the world of science, just like it's true in the world of psychology, it's also true when it comes to moral issues. When we look at the issues that we read about, gun control, climate change, abortion, illegal refugees, wage equity, free speech, uh, gender fluidity, the, uh, the Palestinians, all of these issues are complex. There are no simple black and white answers. Right? Almost nobody believes that abortion is okay under any circumstances. Like, you know, a woman saying, well, we were planning on having a baby in the summer, but this one would end up being born in November, and I don't have any nice winter maternity clothes, so we're going to abort. We don't accept that. Uh, and almost nobody believes the opposite, that abortion is always wrong. Like in a case where a, a baby is unlikely to survive, and it's threatening the life of, her, of the mother. There's times where abortion is right. There's times where abortion is wrong. There's a vociferous argument about where you draw that line, but it's subtle. It's nuanced. Same with climate change. Same with refugees. Same with free speech. Same with gender fluidity. These are complicated, complex issues. Life is really about nuance. The rabbis of the Talmud are famous for looking, and when I study Talmud, you see this all the time, they'll look at two opposing principles that seem to be laws that completely contradict each other and they ask the question, Hacha b'may askinan, which is Aramaic for what case are we talking about here? Are we talking about a law that applies for men or for women only in temple times or in all times? A law that applies only in the land of Israel? A law that applies anywhere? A law that applies only in circum certain circumstances? All of our approach to moral spiritual issues involves a lot of detail, a lot of nuance, a lot of subtlety. Life isn't simple. Genuine relationships, marriage, friendship are not simple. Moral dilemmas aren't simple. So the same God who created us and gave us this very complicated world also gave us an instruction manual that by necessity needs to be deep, subtle, nuanced. Uh, it has to be idealistic and give you something to shoot for, but also be very practical and very real that speaks to where we're at right now. So if you want to understand the essence of marriage, you have to really look at the nuances of the stories of Adam and Eve. If you want to understand the power of speech, the rights and limits of speech, look at the laws about Lashon Hara, the Hebrew word for gossip and harmful speech. So I'm not claiming that I've got it all figured out. I don't have all the answers, but I do deeply believe that these are very important questions that are worth thinking about. I deeply believe that there's a book by the author of Creation who is the author of the Torah, who has a way of communicating with us and making us think about how to approach these ideas more thoughtfully and come up with clear ideas and clear answers. So I'm inviting you to join me and become part of this community of thinkers, people who care, people who want to have a better grasp of things, and hopefully together we'll get inspired to share this knowledge, take action, and make the world a little less dark. I invite you to join me on this journey. Please subscribe. Please give feedback. Please tell me what you want, what you like, what you don't like. And uh, let's go through this journey together. Thank you for listening. Please hit subscribe and also leave feedback if you like the content, but especially if you didn't. These are important conversations. Let's keep schmoozing. <laughs>